Hello everyone. In this video, I'll be sharing a powerful method for successful plant propagation using cuttings, and I'll also introduce a micronutrient that dramatically boosts success rates, iron. By watching this video, you will learn 1. How to master the technique of propagation by cuttings. 2. How to multiply your plants quickly. 3 and gain a deeper understanding of the essential nutrient iron. We'll be using passion fruit in a hands-on propagation experiment. First, I'll explain how to do cuttings effectively. Then, I'll dive into how iron works in plant physiology. Part 1. How to propagate plants by cuttings. To start, when taking cuttings, cut just below a node and leave some leaves at the top. These leaves allow for photosynthesis, which generates carbohydrates, sugars, and the plant hormone auxin, both of which are critical for root formation. However, if the leaves are too large, transpiration and respiration can dry out the cutting. That's why it's important to leave just the right amount of leaf area. As for the rooting medium, do not use soil that contains compost or fertilizer. High solute concentration increases osmotic pressure, causing water to move out of the cutting and leading to dehydration. Water always moves from a region of low to high concentration. So use a sterile inorganic substrate. Also, roots tend to grow well when the medium dries out moderately. That's why it's best to use slit pots that allow good drainage and airflow. The key is frequent watering with fast drying media. Part 2. Iron, the essential micronutrient for growth. Next, let's talk about ferrous iron, Fe2+, an essential element for plant growth. In this experiment, I used a liquid tonic containing soluble ferrous iron, Fe2+, which is readily absorbable by plants. We soaked cuttings in two different solutions. One diluted 100 fold with the iron tonic and the other using just plain water. Both were soaked for 24 hours before planting. Plants perform photosynthesis using chlorophyll and iron is necessary for both the production of chlorophyll and photosynthesis itself. In the soil, most iron exists as ferric iron, Fe3+, which is insoluble and not easily absorbed by plants. That's why many plants, especially non-grasses, release organic acids and protons, H+, from their roots to lower the pH of the rhizosphere. This converts ferric iron, Fe3+, into ferrous iron, Fe2+ a soluble form that can be absorbed. In the light reactions of photosynthesis, photosystem Y, PSI, and photosystem 2, PSII, both require iron-based proteins as cofactors, such as iron sulfur clusters and cytochromes, which help transfer electrons and generate energy. For chlorophyll synthesis, several enzyme-driven biochemical reactions require iron. For example, iron acts as a cofactor in the enzyme ferrochelatase, which is crucial in converting protoporphyrin to protochlorophyllide. Without iron, this synthesis halts, leading to chlorosis, leaf yellowing, and reduced photosynthesis. During early stages, like just after taking a cutting or right after transplanting, the root system is not fully developed in such cases, the roots may lack the energy to release acids and solubilize iron. Applying soluble ferrous iron directly helps plants efficiently absorb this critical nutrient and promote rapid development. Iron application during propagation by cuttings is highly effective, though the underlying science can be quite complex. But if you take your time to understand it, I promise you'll enjoy gardening even more. I'm based in Japan, where I grow various tropical fruit trees, including avocados, mangoes, and bananas. 
and run a nursery. I also share science-based cultivation methods like this one through videos and articles. I hope this video helps growers around the world. If you found this helpful, please consider subscribing to the channel. I also post videos about grafting, pruning, and many other horticultural techniques, so be sure to check those out too. Thanks so much for watching. See you in the next one.